You are listening to the Witness Where You Are podcast with Robert Ertler and Ellie Basarab. How do we truly reach heaven? Does God still give prophecies today? Are we in the end times now? May we all surrender to the Lord, letting the Holy Spirit guide us during today's deep discussion. Welcome, everybody. This is the Witness Where You Are podcast. I'm Rob. And I'm Ellie. And we were just sitting down and having a discussion. We we're like, why don't we just throw the throw this on record to share it and just talk over the microphone? So that's what we're doing now. So where did we start with our conversation? Well, we started talking about um, God being the Spirit, and His Spirit is eternal, and He breathed his breath in us and now we are part of him and he is part of us and it's just this beautiful relationship that he has given us but then he also has given us that choice okay now that i breathed my life into you and gave you this eternal life now you can choose do you want to choose to live with me eternally and having a walk in a relationship with me? Or do you not want to do that and completely deny me and go my way and uh, go away from me and have that eternal time spent elsewhere and not with me? Yeah. And so everything that he's been revealing in these last four years, we're able to take all of this and go right back to, you know, Genesis to where he's creating Adam. And what does he do? You know, he's breathing his breath, the spirit into Adam so that Adam has a spirit and he can have life, it says. Mm -hmm. And this life, as we know, is uh, just Adam was like us, like we have consciousness and so forth and, and choices, right? So, that breath that he breathed is our spirit it is our core it's our heart and it's who we are well isn't that interesting that who we are came from god's spirit i mean this is really something that again you don't hear this in any church or sunday school because it's such a i don't know what you would call it um a risky topic if you don't know what you're talking about i would say if god's not hasn't led you to really know the depths of what that is you know thankfully he's led through this book and like i said all all i'm doing this is just a conversation that ellie and i are having and we're just plugging that information right back into the spirit that god gave us god is is the spirit of god who he is at his core is his spirit that spirit of god gave a piece of him to us just stop and think about what that means who are we at our core? You know, us, our spirit. And that spirit came from the breath of God. I mean, that is so huge. Are we God? Well, then we see all these Elohims and all these levels of God. Let me just, I came across this, uh, this article uh, that listed just different uh, names of God. Oh, like Elohim and Yahweh. Yeah, yeah. So there's. So there's. Are there different levels or hierarchies to those names? Yeah. So like, is one higher than the other? Uh, yes. So there's Elohim, which is God, and so you know it's spelled E L O H I M, and so it starts with E L, and so L is also short for Elohim. So L means God. Elohim means God. Okay, so then we've got Yahweh, which is, you know, Y-H-W-H, it's Yah-Heh-Vad-Heh. Mm. So this is just a condensed version of his name. And this is Lord or Jehovah. Okay, so then there's El Elyon. So it starts with L, so, which is Elohim, which is God. So mm -hmm. God, Elyon. This means, an Elyon means the Most High. So then... Because there's L, it's the Most High God. So there's a hierarchy right there, the Most High God. And then there's Adonai, which is also used for, um, you know, Yahweh and so forth. Mm -hmm. That means Lord and Master. I mean, it, it goes on and on. There's different names, and I won't say all of the names, but look at the purposes of what they do. The God who sees me, Lord God Almighty, the everlasting God. The Lord will provide, the Lord who heals you, the Lord is my banner. Jealous God. Mm. Uh, that was an interesting one. So get this, the jealous God, well, jealousy is a sin, right? 
So here we have a God who's jealous. So is he a sinner? No, because his jealousy is different than our jealousy. There's a there's levels to jealousy just like there is of sanctification and righteousness. I can do something right by my neighbor, human to human, or I can do something right by God. Well, he's jealous for the reason that if you're going to be serving other gods, he doesn't want that. Yes, and so he... He wants you to follow him, which is going to be the best for us, as we know. Right. And so that is a good jealousy. Mm -hmm. So it's just like uh, works need to be defined, mankind's works or or God's works. Jealousy Mm -hmm. is the same way. Um, El Shaddai. El Shaddai is another one. Yes. That means the Almighty. Yep. Mm -hmm. So the point is he has a bunch of different names based on the functions that he does. And then I think mm-hmm. it's Isaiah 53 where there's the spirit of God has seven different spirits that are functioning in the end times. And so there's more than seven plus spirits of God because it doesn't mention like the comforter, yet we know that that is a function of the Holy Spirit. True. So so these functions or these names are for a specific purpose and time. And so he has a way of extending himself and interacting with the world with us in these ways that are all him and so anyway that's when we think of who we are at our core and here you have this god that shows himself in many forms in many ways he gave us choice okay so when we do the will of god just as jesus had his own choice and his own will he said may your will be done father not mine You know, this is Jesus Christ we're talking about. When he was baptized, he had the dove, this Holy Spirit, come upon him. Did he not have a Holy Spirit before? You see, there's a lot of things that are right in our word. But, you know, we're called like Psalm 82, 6, you know, it says, you are the children of God, uh, of the, you know, of the most high God. We are Elohim. And so then there's people that are Elohim in a bad way. And then like Satan is called an Elohim. So Elohim can be used for God the Almighty, or it can be used for evil, uh, and, and it can be used for people, good and bad. What's the common theme bef- between all of those? It's the spirit that is eternal. Hmm. All of us have an, a, a spirit in us that will eternally last. Well, guess what? God is eternal. And guess what? God breathed the spirit into Adam. And he shared that eternity with us, too. And now all of us, whether we want it or not, have an eternal spirit. Yeah. And guess where we're all going to go? Either hell or or Mm -hmm. heaven. And so when we go to heaven, we're not just visiting it. We're becoming, we're going to inherit it. Inherit is to own it. Mm -hmm. This is so huge. We're not just visiting. We are to become a part owner. And we went over this, I think, uh, in one of the previous episodes, but... It's just amazing that, okay, if we're going to become an owner, okay, well, think of the inheritance. Like, we become an heir when we enter into the new covenant and we start serving the Lord, we can become an heir to inherit later. So, somebody dies to give you the inheritance, but the Almighty does not die, but yet God gave us the inheritance. We died. We know it here on earth is the one who dies gives you the inheritance. Mm -hmm. So when we're doing his will and we're choosing him, we are one with him. We then have this certain connection to God. Mm -hmm. And I kind of beating around the bush, but if God gives the inheritance and the one who dies gives the inheritance and we die and Adam's spirit was given by God and we're a part of God, when we choose to do his will, we are one it is god giving us our own inheritance because he's in us we we merge back with him through our choices and this Mm -hmm. is how we you know i've often said like how we communicate in relationally with him spiritually is through our obedience Mm -hmm. because he's not like sitting here in a chair and we're not able to have a vocal conversation like we are Mm -hmm. so we communicate through doing his will and that just happens to be what jesus was doing when he was one and jesus is saying father may when i leave may they be may they do you know the things that i'm doing and heal and preach and and cause do miracles and you know may they become one with you as i am one with you 
And how is that oneness there is by doing the will of the Father. So this choice thing, it started with the separation of the extension of his spirit to Adam. Bloop, a little piece broke off into Adam. It's extended, but it's still God extending himself. The spirit that came from him is his spirit. It came from him. He's sitting in the throne. It came from the throne. This is really amazing. The trumpet angels at the end, they came, they reached from out of the throne, not from beside the throne. They reached out from the throne. This is God extending himself in the trumpet angels, just as he's extending himself from the throne into Adam. There's different forms of and extensions of God, but we become resonant with him when we are doing his will. So the Adam thing happened, boom, little pieces in Adam, and now we're in this choice situation. And that choice situation basically turns off at another line in the sand of, a, of things changing, and that's when we get glorified. And so now we've been proven. We are him. We've, we're fully holy. We're, uh, we've been perfected through Jesus Christ and following him and so forth. And now we are in a glorified soul now because our spirit is now in a seen form of glory within the glorified body. And now the soul is glorified. Well, glory comes from God and glory shines light. And well, we are to shine light. So all of these things are just really, really deep. It's just uh, something that was on my mind. What's on my mind also is how words have power. God's word had power from the very beginning, and he used his words to create the entire universe. He said, let there be light, and he said this, and he said that, and things happened. And I feel like when he breathed into us, he also gave us the opportunity to use those words to witness to other people, to bless other <clears throat> people around us, to serve, to share um, the gospel of salvation. He, Jesus came down on this earth and he was doing exactly that. He was serving, he was witnessing, he was healing, he was doing all these miracles, but most importantly, he was talking to the people about God. He was witnessing, and that is exactly what God is calling us to do, to continue to witness. And his word gives us something to do, right? I mean, it, it right. teaches us to have a thought and his word still has that power today. And the Bible <clears throat> teaches us. It's a guidebook for us. And I don't know. I just want to encourage everybody to just go straight to the scripture. And to just read the Bible on your own. And when you do pick up the book of God's mysteries, there's so many Bible verses that were quoted. Just read through them. Read through the Bible verses as you read through the book, too. Because I truly hope and pray that God reveals all of this to you directly. So if you get into that walk, you will have all of this known to you. You'll feel peace. Right? You'll feel the settlement of truth. You will know exactly that it does bring you closer to God. You have to surrender so you have to take all that pride and set it aside. You have to forgive others. You have to be surrendering. You have to truly want his will above yours. You have to truly, deeply want that and pursue that. And that's why a lot of people just have not had a spiritual relationship with God, because they, they just are not really surrendering. They might, to, a, to like a small fraction, for 15 minutes of their afternoon or something, or on their drive home, they have this great thought and desire to just follow the Lord better. But then they get a text message or something, and now they're texting and driving, or they get home and somebody says something that, you know, changes, hey, let's go out to a movie or something, and it just takes you out of that. And you're just, they, they dip their toe in the water and they pull it right back out, and they never really jump in. They never really experience walking over time with God. And that's what it takes. It takes walking over time with God. That's why we have a lifetime. You know, what are we to endure in a period of time, our lifetime? It's not just for the 15 minutes during the car ride home. It's the walk. The thing is, there's a spiritual side in relationship with God, and He acts. 
He literally can answer your prayer. He can act in so many different ways. I could start going off on all the different ways that he can interact with you, but there's all these tests. You know, we're supposed to test if the spirit is right or not. It, does this draw you to God or not? Um, does this match, you know, what was said before in inspired writings and scriptures in the canon or not? You're supposed to test everybody who claims that they're speaking of God or writing of God or illustrating of God, preaching of God. You are to test it all and not just accept it. But to know the true discernment, you need the Holy Spirit to have Him confirm it in you. So you need to walk to get the Holy Spirit. You see, so a lot of people can go to all these churches and they don't have the discernment of the Holy Spirit because they don't know how to walk. And so they're using the discernment of their own mind. And part of that discernment is, oh, this place looks awesome. It looks fresh and contemporary. The stage looks cool with all the lights. The band members look cool. They're playing the coolest songs. And, you know, like, that's that must be worship. This is an awesome experience. I feel cool because I wore my cool clothes and I got coffee and I feel like I fit in. And that's a, it feels good because now I'm propping myself up with pride. Beware of all of that, people. Beware because that's not the mindset that God has you to come before the throne of the Lord in worship. If it means you need to not get your coffee, if it means you need to wear just regular clothes and not not do your hair or makeup, then do that. If it means staying home and getting on your knees, do that. But connect with God and He knows your heart. So church can be anywhere. It can be in your home. Just fellowship. Just get with somebody and talk. That's it. Um, but the Spirit of God that's in you, that came from God. That's not something that he manufactured and said, the spirit is also out of the dust. Hmm. No, he breathed the spirit in and then there was life. Life is consciousness. Life is who we are. Life is our spirit, the immeasurable, unseen us. So we really have to not just let that go. We have to really think about all that. All these Elohims that are described, you know, God has a council and he's the head over the council of several other Elohims. So all of these Elohims are giving their advice in what they would like to see the decision to be. Now, God is sovereign over all, but so there is a hierarchy, but there's so much going on with the spirit and who we are at our core and who we will be as we inherit the kingdom of God. So now a little bit more on that, like, so God says we will inherit it. Well, the father does not, not only does he not die, but he does not back out of that either. He doesn't go away. He doesn't stop owning it. But yet we also will own it. And what's it called? The kingdom of God. Because God owns it. Well, guess what? We own it too. God owns it. We own it. We are God in the hierarchy. There's the highest. But we become with a glorified body closest to God than we ever have been since Adam but he is trying to draw us back to him through our choices. Again, Adam, Genesis 1, boom, here's a piece of me, and now that's yours. It gets back to me and becomes one again with me through your choices over time. Keep choosing me, and you become the owner of the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. You are that. Well, why would we be that? Well, look at the way it started. We came from God from him directly there's no other way around that we came from god who we can be is back with him it magnifies our choice in a good way not a flames and torment way it's the opposite end of that spectrum there's some really scary stuff some really dark stuff evil mm -hmm. now we know that, you know, when we're in heaven, we will have our own rooms and our mansions and so forth. And the King James Version says mansions. There's going to be a city that we can be within, you know. And so we know that these forms that he's created will remain as those separate looking forms. But yet they're all one as one God in heaven. And so it starts out as a spirit of God, but then he breaks pieces off. Why does he break pieces off? Because he wants a relationship. He wants to be loved back. And so 
He keeps those pieces separate because he wants a relationship. He doesn't want the way it was. He created us and said it was very good because it just enabled a relationship with him to happen. So if we're going to have an everlasting relationship with God as God, with him being over us still at that time, then we need to prepare for that now and have a relationship now. You know, we're in the courting phase. We're in the, we want to enter into relationship. You know, we need to either come to him with fear or love or likeness, but we need to come to him either way. And that relationship is to build toward love. And that love is God. And so when we feel his love and we have communion with him and we have that relationship with him and us obeying him, we will feel that love. And we're, we're ready for the marriage day. We could die in that moment. And, you know, when we feel all of that in the form of complete sanctification, that is, then we are ready to enter into glorification of the soul to be one with him in an array of forms of him in a hierarchy. Just as Jesus was of the hierarchy of the Father, he called God the Father God. He said, I have a God. At least twice, and that's in the book. And then we have the Holy Spirit. You can blaspheme Jesus, but you can't blaspheme the Holy Spirit. There's this hierarchy. Yet they are all one, as we know. And we know that Jesus asked Peter, Who am I? Oh, you're Lord. Who am I? You're Lord. Who am I? You're my God. I still wouldn't blaspheme Jesus or God. <laughs> <sighs> no. Um, no. Yeah. Um, I have an off the cuff off the topic question but it's kind of on the topic too speaking about the spirit of god so he breathed that spirit into us but during creation he also created the birds and all the animals yeah. and everything else yeah does it say anywhere in the bible if he breathed the breath of life into the animals or not because if he would, then that means they would have eternal life as well. Or did it say that it, they were just created? I'm just trying to think about like, okay. I personally haven't studied. Breath. I personally haven't studied that topic too much, but I was studying, um, <clears throat> and he certainly hasn't like given me any prophecy or revelation on that. But um, we do have a strong foundation that we can pull from. I would say in that they have life. You know, they're not like a rock. They have life. They die. They have choice. Um, the life came from God. Mm -hmm. So God's breath, God's spirit enabled the life in Adam. And so if life is synonymous with an animal, I could see how the breath of God is also in them. Now, I mean, this isn't too crazy because God is also known as the lion. That's true. Yeah. So he's known as like there's angels that are and then the seen Holy that have Spirit an eagle face dove. and yeah. like wings of an eagle and an angel mm -hmm. and with talons of you know and like uh, the body of a, like an ox and like different animals are likened to some of these very very powerful angels. You know, there's different kinds of angels, but when we look at the trumpet angels and we see that they're coming out of the throne of God, etc., the trumpet angel has the keys to hell. Who has the keys to hell? Jesus. Well, the trumpet angel, the seventh one, calls the rapture and the dead in Christ to rise. Well, who does that? Jesus. Well, who also does that? Michael. So, like, there's all these synonymous things, but when we see all the names for God, El Elyon and Yash Yeshua and, and Yahweh and all these different names, they're functions of his extension of how he's interacting relationally but there's lots of different names so we can't be afraid of the many names mm -hmm. we have to know that this is the nature of how he has been acting you know so yeah. our animals in heaven we see that jesus comes from the clouds riding a white horse like so white horse came from heaven and you know so people who wonder well when my dog dies is he going to heaven you know, the gospel was for humans. Now, we are not told if there's a gospel for angels, but we know that angels do preach the word of God to humans in the end. Trumpet one, angel number one does. Mm -hmm. And then that angel preaches to all nations. So just as Revelation 10, the prophet's given the book to go out to many nations and so forth, then after him comes the angel number one, trumpet one, who then takes that message and he, it says that he has or the message with him. And so that message is being given to all then. And so 
basically the angel is like cleaning up where the prophet wasn't able to get to. Now you have this angel also preaching, right? And then you have all of the two witnesses, the candlesticks and the trees, and they're all preaching this, you know, this same clear message because God is clear. And this is the clarity of the mysterious side of everything revealed. And they're all saying it for a certain purpose that they all need to hear the straight up version of what it really takes to get to heaven because the time is running out. And so you see angels and animals and the angels are animals. You see God coming as like a lion and so forth. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's other accounts too. And then like in the Old Testament, there was another purpose for animals and that was sacrifice. And then Jesus was the lamb. And Jesus was the lamb as well, where blood yeah. had to be shed yeah. and so the um, sins could be forgiven. Yeah. So in the Old Testament, even in the very beginning, it was, um, you know, God wanted sacrifice, not of food and not of, you know, all the plants and stuff, but he wanted life. He yeah. wanted blood to be shed so a living being or somebody had to die in the old testament was an animal that had to die yeah so there's there's ties to animals but get this the spirit of god you know he created life well who are we children of god humans are children of god who else are children of god angels are children of god isn't that interesting so when we're talking about these trumpet angels being a form of jesus an extension of jesus an extension of god you know, Jesus is an extension of the Father who's sitting in the throne, and everybody's coming out. Jesus is not only at the right hand of God, but he's in the right hand of God. Things come out of God's hand, which is his hand is synonymous with his works. His works. They are his being done. And then the, out of the throne, who sits in the throne? The Father. So you have angels coming out who also look like animals at times. Angels can look like animals. We know this. Mm -hmm. And yet angels are a child of God. We have the image of God as humans, but we know that we don't have wings yet. Yet we will have wings. We will be as the angels. Again, angels can have the face, many faces of different and body parts of different animals. So it's just something that we're applying all of this information to this topic now and the thing is all of these underpinnings the this foundation that he's made clear i mean you can apply this to any topic in the bible and start reading it and at some point in that story you're gonna fall back upon the walk or the order or what's been made known in who we are as spirits or who's making the choices who has to contend for our faith is it god or is it us it's us we have to contend for our faith. We're the ones who are given the choice. Those who have a choice can then be enabled, and they are able to then partake in doing their part of a new covenant. But you don't have a new covenant if you don't have choice. There's no such thing as a covenant if there's not two parties that have their own choice. Jesus had his own will, and he wanted the Father's will to be done. This all fits with the canon. It fits with the scriptures and the inspired writings in the book of God's mysteries. All of it fits together and it makes all of these things clear. And it is so glorious when you realize just who we really are. And so we certainly, when we surrender ourselves and self-deny, we, we are not to put ourselves down in that. We give God the praise of being able to create such a creature we can't create creatures, let alone two that can reproduce healthy offspring. Evolutionists, you know, people think like, well, we came from sludge and then we kept gaining systems to where we became a fruit and then a monkey and then a human. Well, the systems of all of our faculties need to be operating perfectly at the same time. <laughs> they cannot come across as, okay, now you have right. a slug with a finger. So many coincidences have to happen perfectly together in sync in order for us to yeah. be human, really. So, you know, God created 
and we're supposed to value life like yeah. you're talking about all of this and you know when god breathes that breath of life in you that's a piece of god in you and you need to value that whether it's a baby that you know the parents are thinking of the possibility of abortion or whether it's somebody who is standing on the bridge contemplating suicide you have to think about all of those things as this is life this is the breath of god in this person and we just need to value every single being in this world and that's why we have the two great commandments love god and love others and others means not just the neighbor across the street from you but every single person that has a breath of life in them you need to value them and it, love them it changes our choice it adds weight to our choice you know if i'm going to be the store owner i'm going to start acting like the store owner before i am the store owner you know you have to dress for the job you want not the job you have. This is the principle of, you know, if you're going to be in a relationship forever with God, you need to start now. God's a spirit. How do you spiritually connect with Him? You can't do it from person to person the way we are. We, you have to figure out how to spiritually connect with the God that you want to spend eternity with because you're not just going to heaven to do all the fun things that you want to do without God, and like He's not present or anything. No, you have to want to go to heaven. You have to evaluate even why you want to go to heaven. Do you want to go to heaven to just avoid the flames and just live a high life of no pain and so forth? Or do you want to go to heaven because you want to be closer to God? You want to be able to hug Him and see Him? And Is that what you want? Because we're supposed to be in relationship with God. We're going to live with God forever. So if we don't know God, why do we want to go to heaven? We need to first seek the owner of the kingdom of God. That's God. We need to seek his kingdom because if we're in his kingdom, we are in relationship with God. Some things that, you know, to think about. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess we'll leave that here and um, maybe we'll catch you on the next one.